Polymers are formed by a chemical reaction in which a large number of monomers um, are joined sequentially to form a chain. Now with many polymers, only one type of monomer is, monomer is used. However, in others, there may be two or three. Now you've already modeled how addition polymers work because of that reactive double bond. Condensation polymers are those that release small molecules such as water when pairs of monomers join together. Now, condensation polymers are made from monomers that have two different groups of atoms that can join together. So if there's only one reactive group, the chain will terminate. If there's two reactive groups, a linear chain will form. If there's three or more, this usually results in a three-dimensional polymer and a cross-linked polymer. Looking at the structure of cellulose, it's a long chain link of beta glucose monomers found in higher plants. Uh, they're mostly in the cell walls of these plants, um, cotton also being an example of cellulose. Now there are two types of glucose monomers, alpha and beta. Now the structures are extremely similar with one key difference. In alpha, like the manly glucose, the HO on the first carbon belongs at the bottom. In beta glucose, the HO is at the top. Now all the HOs allow strong interactions between neighboring chains which result in very strong hard crystalline regions and the strength increases with added bundles. Cellulose is an example of a naturally occurring condensation polymer. Um, within cellulose, beta glucose monomers join together in an alternating or flipped fashion. As a result, a water molecule is always going to be released when two of these beta glucose monomers join together a hydroxide from the first and a hydrogen from the flipped version forming that water molecule. Now, those two groups of atoms, regardless of looking the same initially, are different when they join together. This allows the chain to build. One way to represent the co this condensation of polymerization is shown on the screen. Now the red squares highlight which reactive molecules are actually involved in the chain formation. Now this leads to the actual polymer itself where X represents the number of water molecules produced depending on how many monomers were actually joined. Nylon is a well known example of a condensation polymer. Now it's made by reacting diamines which contain the functional group amino which is NH2 with compounds that contain the carboxylic acid group, the Ku. Now, if you're good at Where's Wally, you should notice that the hydroxyl group from the Ku and a freely ionized H from the amine group are split out of this reaction to join to form water. Someone trying to shoot you? Get some Kevlar. Now, that's the brand name, but it's super strong and light. Now, it consists of long molecule chains with many interchain bonds. Remember h -fon? Now this makes it super strong and can be made into anything if you have the money. But mainly it's bulletproof jackets, ropes, cables, yeah. 